Hi, I've been having a few issues with my MakerBot, so I wanted to print directly from the SD card, and I've been using a crappy old computer, and I've been getting all sorts of slip and step issues with my um, uh, stepper motors, so I'm looking to fixing that, but I thought I'd build the Gen 4 interface board, the uh, little external keypad so you can operate the MakerBot directly from the keypad. You don't need a computer, you can print directly from SD cards. So, here we go, we're going to build the thing up and uh, hopefully fix the uh, stepper motor uh, issues as well. We'll see. Anyway, let's build it. And now we have to get inside our MakerBot here, so we've got to take the damn thing apart. And it's an absolute mess in here, but we've got to plug this thing into our uh, interface connector, which is all the way in here. Oops, so he's pulled out a cable. Lovely. Oops. Excellent. What did I pull out? That thing. Don't know how. Should have had a clip on that. Anyway. Got to wedge it all back together, and uh, this is messy. And there we have it. We now have our Gen 4 interface board, so we should be able to operate this thing without the computer. Here we go. Oh, blinking. That's good. Might have to adjust the contrast. I assume that's what the pot's for. Get out my Swiss Army knife, tweak it, there we go, oh. well, there is no text, might have to read the instructions. Well, no, I'm getting absolutely nothing, it's just flashing the debug here and uh, pressing the reset button, and I don't know, it says I need version uh, 2.8 firmware or later in my MakerBot, but I'm pretty sure I uh, upgraded to the latest firmware when I built the thing, so beats me. Uh, yeah, debug time, all right. And I checked, there it is, motherboard version uh, firmware 3.1, so it should support this LCD, so don't know why the damn thing is uh, flashing debug. Back to the instructions. Ta-da, finally got it. There we go. It uh, looks like it was um, something to do, maybe the uh, uh, ribbon cable crimp or something like that. I went in there and sort of recrimped it and fiddled around with it, gave it the old uh, percussive maintenance and uh, seems to have come good. So, looks like we have a winner. Now if you have a look at a uh, microscope adapter I'm trying to print for my Olympus uh, microscope, you'll see it's supposed to be a... a uh, a cylinder basically and uh, it's it's not it's stepping out the edges like that there seems to be uh, some slippage in my um, in my maker bot and you know, everyone has said uh, something different oh it's uh, there's not enough drive current going to the uh, stepper motors the boat the belts are slipping there's backlash and that sort of stuff uh, some people have said that it's um the fact that I'm printing from the USB instead of from the SD card there's you know, a buffer problem sent in via USB, which I find hard to believe. But anyway, I'm going to act. First thing I'm going to do is just try and not build the same thing again, but uh, from the SD card using my um, uh, Gen 4 interface controller. Okay, what I've done is generated the necessary uh, file for my adapter here, and I'm going to go build from SD card. Microscope adapted 2, that's the only file on the card. Excellent. So I'll select that. Oh. And there goes my MakerBot, it's starting. And you can see it's starting to ramp up the temperature there as it actually moves the uh, platform. So it's got a target of 225. And uh, we'll see what happens. That'll take some time to warm up. Doll, it looks like I screwed 
this connector that uh, came out that was uh, goes to the heated build platform. And that's why the heated build platform um, was showing the incorrect temperature. It doesn't plug into this connector here, even though it's a perf it's the mating connector with the locking everything. That's the quadrature output. It's got to plug into this header over here. Ridiculous. All right, let's try that again. Monitor mode. 20 degrees, there we go, much better. All right, so we'll start our uh, start our build again, build from SD card. And I think that's why it didn't go ahead, because it was waiting to uh, build up, waiting for the uh, platform to build up to temperature, and it never did. So we'll go, yep, there we go. All right, the target temperature is 100, so it should start, there we go, it's jumping up. And the target temperature for the tool head is 225 degrees C. So once it reaches those temperatures, it should start the build. No, I think I'm just going to stop there because uh, cancel the build. I can see some uh, uh, step in the pattern on the Y mode. So let me just uh, go into jog mode here. And I like this control panel. I can just manually tweak things up. Take it out. And yep, the problem on my Y. I'll show you that up close. And you should be able to see that stepped pattern over under my finger there. So it's definitely way off on the y-axis. So my next step is to check the uh, voltage or the drive going, the current drive, which you measure uh, by measuring voltage on test points here on the board. Um, this is the Y stepper motor controller. And uh, I've it, uh, the instructions say it should be uh, 0.6 volts for ref and it certainly is there it is 0.6 so let's check the other ones and uh, see what they are and I think I've got it figured there are different voltages here for the different types of stepper motors either the MakerBot NEMA 17 or the Moons brand NEMA 17 and if, and if we look inside my MakerBot here you'll see I've got a Moons brand if you can read that Moons brand motor so that's why I've got it wrong. I've got these set up to the um, the MakerBot stepper motor, so I have to adjust these. And there is a fairly huge voltage here. There's uh, it's currently set to ref is 0.6. It should be for the Moon's motor on the X Y axis set to 1.68. It's getting nowhere near enough current. Oh. Well, that certainly sounds uh, different now. It sounds like it does actually have more grunting there in each step it certainly sounds louder so I'll uh, let this go for a while it's got a I think a 60 minute uh, build time on my microscope adapter and uh, we'll see how it goes by the way this controller has actually got some hooks on the back it allows you to just hook it up on the top of the unit like that which is rather neat because it does uh, slide around it's got no rubber feet on it if you try and use it on the desk and you push the buttons it just slides across the desk hopeless and it does seem to be working very nicely. I see no issues in the X or Y direction. I think we might have a winner. And you can see it just about to fill in my second layer there. So it's got the uh, cross hatch underneath it and now it's gone for the solid. Next layer. Oh yeah, it didn't quite fill it all in. Maybe it fell through. But uh, it should eventually, well hopefully, eventually we'll fill in that gap there, I guess it will uh, put like a small solid uh, section between, there we go, I love the sounds, there we go, if we go in this direction we might, uh... yeah there we go, it's building up the platform there, you can see it, and this is building up the next level which will have, uh, because it's not just a, a uh, it's not just a single uh, cylinder, there is a stepped uh, aspect to this, but there you go. And there it is, my first ever make it your useful MakerBot print. And it looks absolutely spot on in the X axis and 
More importantly, the thing I was having a problem with was the y-axis. And there it is. It looks absolutely perfect. Just like I bought one. I'm sure there's an art <laughs> to ripping off these rafts on the bottom. And yeah, I might have to uh, get a knife in there and slice that out. Actually, I just realised I don't really have to take the raft off that, because um, it does seem very difficult even trying to get the knife in there. So I guess the idea is not to print rafts, but I don't need, um, I don't need to remove the raft because this will sit on the bottom of the uh, microscope adapter, and you won't. It'll be. It is the bottom of it, and you won't. Uh, you won't really see it. So all I've got to do is clean the edges up a bit and uh, make sure it's not fouling the inside there and uh, that should be right. Now unfortunately um, it turned out perfectly but uh, doesn't fit. It's too small and it doesn't fit my camera either and the idea um, was to fit my old uh, blogging camera. This is the old camera I used to use for the blog and uh, you know, the whole idea was for it to sit in there like that and for that to go on my microscope but the inner diameters are too small and I did allow half a millimetre uh, bigger but obviously that's not enough. The uh, I, I guess when it squirted the plastic it oozed out and made a smaller diameter hole so um, yeah bummer it's a perfect print other than that I love it but uh, just well, I learned something. It doesn't fit. You've got to accommodate that. So what I'll do is I'll print a couple of test rings at various diameters just to get the exact fit on my camera and on the microscope. And when I've got that, then I'll print the final thing and uh, hopefully it should be good. I mean, I could try and file it out or something like that. But uh, I think I'll just uh, experiment some more with the uh, software. So there's a couple of flat spots on it. Very, very small. Uh, flat spots you you'd really be uh, you know so you can probably see a flat stop uh, spot up the top and bottom there but apart from that it's pretty darn impressive I'm uh, I like that a lot I mean considering that how many tens of thousands of little micro steps did it have to do and uh, considering that this is an open loop uh, system uh, the MakerBot's an open loop control system and there is no absolute positional feedback and doing tens of thousands of little micro steps and after it built up all of this and to be pretty darn close to spot on like that I think is awesome so there you go um, I had a hard time getting the raft off the bottom so I probably shouldn't uh, print the raft on uh, future ones I think but that's really nice first useful print well, check this out I decided to print a spool holder to replace my bodgy uh, cardboard spool holder on the back there that I've got so uh, that should mount on the top here and uh, I should be able to have my spool on the top awesome let's break it off and give it a try well that was a waste of filament unfortunately it fits it was a very tight fit in there but the damn thing doesn't rotate I've got to put a lot of force onto that to make the thing rotate, it needs to be loose. It's crazy. It doesn't work at all. Grr.